So you just learned about Trust Wallet and you want to learn step by step how to set up your own wallet address and make sure to keep your funds safe. Well, I've got you covered right here. I'm Brett at Crypto GX and I'm going to go step by step through everything you need to know about Trust Wallet, getting you set up with your own wallet address and everything you can really do with Trust Wallet while being safe. So let's just jump right in. First, we're gonna open up our phone app store, whether it be Google Play or Apple App Store. At the moment, we're gonna be using the Apple App Store. Once you're in your app store, type in Trust Wallet at the top, and it should be the first thing you see after whatever ad pops up. Click the get icon. In my case, it's the down arrow with a cloud since I've had it before. And once it's done downloading, we're gonna click open. Anytime you're downloading a wallet app and you wanna make sure it's the right one, you can scroll all the way to the bottom, and then you can see the developer website right there. Click on that, and it'll open up you can make sure that it's from the actual developer of that particular app that you want it from so we'll open up our trust wallet app and the first thing that we're gonna see here is create new wallet and I already have a wallet obviously in this case we are creating a new wallet but once we do create it there's something that we're gonna save later on called a secret recovery phrase in the future if you lose your phone or something like that you will put I already have a wallet and then you'll put in that secret recovery phrase but we'll get to that in a sec so first thing we're gonna do here is create new wallet on trust wallet they're gonna have you create a passcode. This is gonna be used very, very often. So you're gonna to want to make sure to write this down and keep it safe. I'm just gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six. Next, you're gonna to wanna to secure your wallet and have access to it with Face ID. It's gonna make it a lot easier to sign in so you can just hold up your face. I prefer to do that over a pin and you can skip it and do it later, but in my opinion, it's the easiest way. So I'll click enable Face ID and then click allow and it'll use your face to sign in and you know tie that to your account. Next, this is up to your own preference. You can turn on notifications because they're you know useful if you wanna get pricing updates on different cryptocurrencies and you know other news. So I'll I'll just click enable notifications and allow. Perfect, so your wallet is ready. So your crypto is live on the blockchain. What are you gonna do now? So you're gonna either buy crypto or deposit crypto, most likely. Let's take a look at buying crypto. So we'll click buy and it shows a staking rewards. We don't need to get into that. Let's say you wanna buy $150 worth of Bitcoin. So you're gonna see right above the buy it now option, it shows Apple Pay. That's one of the many options that you can use in order to buy crypto on the Trust Wallet app. Click on that Apple Pay button and you can see see the different providers that you can buy Apple Pay with. Each of these providers, you're going to have to create an account and it's a long process that we won't go through. You can choose whichever one works best for you or instead of Apple Pay, you can use a debit card, credit card, bank transfer or digital wallet. Each of these options just depends on what your preference is. They all are going to have some sort of provider that you go through and you're gonna to have to create an account and put your personal information in there in order to transfer the dollars. Now, instead of doing that, I just click done and it's gonna bring you to your homepage. On that previous page, we could have deposited crypto as well. This is the page it would have brought up if we did that. We could have clicked whichever particular cryptocurrency we wanted to deposit. Let's say we wanted to do Ethereum. I click on that, then it shows you your particular wallet address for Ethereum. You would copy and paste that. We can get into that in a little bit, but the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to look at when we have our trust wallet is our privacy and our security, meaning it didn't bring up our security phrase on its own. And so at the moment, we're not safe from losing this particular wallet. So the number one thing, if you're going to remember anything from this video, is to make sure to get your secret recovery phrase. And this is how we're going to do it. So in order to find our secret recovery phrase, we're going to have to do a little bit of digging, but it's not very far. The first step, if we're on our homepage here, where you can see on the bottom left, we are on our homepage. First, we are going to click the very top where it says main wallet. Once we click main wallet, it'll show the multi-coin wallets that we have. In this particular case, we only have one. You can add a wallet on the bottom but for this wallet we're going to click the triple dot icon on the right once we click that we're almost there see how it says security phrase backups you can either back up to your iCloud or do a manual backup now I prefer manual backup iCloud it's still on the cloud it still has potential for it to be hacked even though typically iCloud is touted as safe I would rather trust having it on a piece of paper in a fireproof lockbox just in case any sort of emergency happens there's no way that anyone can see it there's no way it can get burned up and it is safe. So we're going to click on the backup now to the right of where it says manual, or you can just click on the manual. Here you'll put in your passcode or use your face ID, and then it'll show you this pop-up. And it wants you to agree to two things. The number one is that Trust Wallet does not have access to this key. It's for your eyes only. And number two, it's that you should not save this in any digital format. You need to write it on a piece of paper, store it securely.
securely. So exactly what I was saying. Definitely do not keep this online. Once you agree to those, click continue. This is what the page looks like that shows your security phrase. It's gonna have 12 numbers. They're all gonna be numbered and you're gonna make sure that they are written down in the right order. Because if they're out of order, then you're not gonna be able to save your secret recovery phrase. And there's gonna be 144 different options of what that order could be. So make sure they're all written in the right order. Once you have that saved, you're gonna go down to the bottom and click continue. Once you click continue, it's gonna ask you to verify that you know your security phrase and have it written down. It's gonna do this by asking what word number two is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click one of these. Word number five, it's gonna ask that as well. So they're gonna ask you which words are in which order. They're not gonna ask you all of them and write down the whole thing, but they'll ask you an example of various words. You know, in this case, it's asking me what word two, word five, word six, and word 12 are. It's gonna be different for each person, but you're gonna just put in the selections for what those words are. And then once you get the correct answers, it'll let you pass. In that case, I did not get it correctly, and it's gonna make me type it in again. So once you click confirm, after confirming that you have the correct secret phrase written down, it's gonna show on your secret phrase backups that the manual one is active. Once you're done here, you'll click save. You'll go X and you'll be back to your homepage. So the next thing that you're probably gonna to wanna to do is show the coins that you care about on your home screen. In order to do this, we're going to be on this homepage and click manage crypto. And each of these coins will just have a little ticker for the ones that we want to add to our homepage. In my case, we've got Ethereum. Let's say I also want Bitcoin to be there. So then I'll add this little ticker right there and then I'll go back and then boom, I'll have Bitcoin on my home screen. It'll show that, you know, what the amount is that I have. It'll show the price that it is available at. And typically if you send yourself crypto, it's gonna show up here as well. But this is also just for price tracking as well. So with that in mind, let's show you how to receive crypto. So in order to receive, it's very simple on the Trust Wallet app. You just stay on your homepage and near the top here in the middle, next to this very green buy button, there is a receive button. And once you click receive, you will just select the blockchain that you want to receive crypto from. If you have a wallet that you wanna send cryptocurrency from, let's say I wanted to send myself some Solana. In this case, I will just tap on Solana and it will pull up a QR code and an address. As I mentioned before, once you do this, this is the QR code that you can scan on your other app. It will copy and paste your wallet address for you. You can also click right here on the left, the copy button, and this will copy your address. You can then move over to whatever other wallet you have, paste that in there, and then you know you have the correct wallet address to send cryptocurrency to. Now, what if you want to send cryptocurrency from this particular wallet? Well, let's go back to the homepage. Once you're at the homepage, very simple again, we can either click the send button that is up on the top here on our homepage, or if we have crypto on the bottom, let's say I click Solana down here, I can also click the send button here. Now, once I click send there, it'll pop up this send page. This is where you paste the wallet address that you want to send cryptocurrency to. You can type it in one by one as well. I recommend copy and pasting so that you know you're sending the money to the right address. Or you can use the QR code feature, which is also very handy. In order to use the QR code feature, just like when you wanted to receive crypto, you would pull up the QR code of wherever you want to send it. And then on this page right here, on the very top right, there's a square with a line through it where you click that, it'll ask you for access to your camera. You'll click allow, and then it'll pull up a camera and you will hover over the QR code that you want to send crypto to. Once you scan that correctly, it will populate this particular box with the correct wallet address that you want to send money to. After that, you will go to this Solana amount. Let's say you want to send one soul to that account. I don't have any in this account, but no big deal. On Solana or certain blockchains, they might ask you to send a memo. So make sure that that memo is correct. When you pull up the receiving address, if it requests a memo, you've got to make sure to put that in there. It could be a little code like XYZ123. We don't know what it is. It'll generate something depending on the blockchain. Solana is one of those that can ask for it. XRP, Ethereum typically is not going to ask for it, but usually just leave the memo blank and it'll be fine. Once you've put in the correct wallet address, the amount you want to send and the correct memo, if there is one that's necessary, all you do is click next and then it will show you the amount that's going to be transferred and whatever the gas fees or transaction fees are going to be and you'll click confirm. You can do lots of different things with the Trust Wallet app. You can look on this trending page to see the different trending tokens and you can filter it by the different blockchains. If you want to do BNB, Solana, Ethereum, or the base chain. If you want to swap cryptocurrencies, that's a very popular thing. You'll click swap down here on the bottom and you can swap from you know anything. If you want to swap from Uni to Ethereum, all you need to do is type in the amount that you want to swap and then it'll show you a transaction, for example. It'll give you a fee and probably what you're going to end up with on the other end once it's transferred because it's you know not particularly exact. It's pretty darn close and the fees change depending on the blockchain that you use. If you click earn, you can see what staking options you have available. If you have something like in this case, BNB, Solana, TRX, DOT, 
Scott and Adam. You can click on those and stake your coins, basically put it up to be earning interest just for holding them. And then one of the most important things is if you go down to the bottom right and click discover, there's all sorts of decentralized applications or dApps that you can connect to. Things like NFT applications like OpenSea. All you have to do is scroll through these applications. Let's say we wanted to open up Uniswap here. We'll make sure to agree to the disclaimer because Trust Wallet does not own or operate these third-party decentralized applications. You just have to make sure you trust the applications that you're using within this Discover page. If it's something that's on their Discover page, then it's probably going to be fine. But if you're going to type in your own URL, let's say I type in OpenSea.io and they have an option right here, but let's say I just click go. I typed in that URL. I would have made sure that it was correct and that I wasn't you know, connecting to something that was untrustworthy because if I do, then they could drain my wallet of all its assets. If I wanted to connect to this, there's typically going to be a connect button on the top right or top left. In this case, top right. I'll click that. I'm on the trust wallet. So I'll click trust wallet and then connect. Agree to the terms and service of OpenSea after reading them, of course. And then it'll ask for a signature request. Signature requests are incredibly important when it comes to mobile wallets like this because they agree to certain things using your wallet. So if you connect to an untrustworthy decentralized application or website and connect your wallet and click a signature, they could have hidden things in there that give them certain access to your wallet that you would not really want, aka they could then drain your wallet. This is that step where you would be giving them access. So this is why you only want to interact with decentralized applications that you know and trust and make sure that the URL is correct. So in this case, it's a trusted website, so I'll click confirm. Here, it'll use my face ID or you can use your passcode. Once you're connected, the connect button is gone and there's a little person icon on the top right. I'll click that and then it shows me my account with the NFTs that I don't have at the moment, but you can go on their platform, you can buy NFTs, sign transactions to purchase them and whatnot. And that's the section where you would be using decentralized applications. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you stay safe. Make sure to keep your secret recovery phrase safe, written down and in somewhere locked away that only you know about, because that's the ultimate piece of safety here. The other piece is, you know, not signing into things like decentralized applications that you don't trust. So nobody can get access to your wallet without basically you giving them approval to. If you enjoyed and learned something, make sure to like this video and subscribe for all things crypto going forward. We're gonna have a lot more content coming out soon. If you're really interested in getting involved in crypto and buying some, I'll leave some links to Coinbase and crypto.com where you can get $50 of crypto just for signing up with those links. And if you're interested in meme coins, I'll leave a link to Moonshot where you can get some free meme coins just for signing up with that link as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.